The Bolin or Bowline, as it's sometimes called, is an absolutely fantastic all-purpose loop knot. It's very easy to tie, it's very easy to untie. It's used in climbing, I believe. It's used for pretty much anything you can think of when you need a quick loop system. Easy to adjust, ties in all sorts of different type of cordage, paracord, some, some bungee stuff you can, some not. It's got a lot of advantages, like I said, being able to tie and untie quite easily. However, it's got a couple of disadvantages. It does not handle lateral pull very well, if that sometimes happens, if it gets snagged or just pulled in the wrong direction. And its ease of untying, in my opinion, is also somewhat of a downfall. And we'll, I'll show and discuss that a little bit more. So let's go ahead and show how to tie this. All right, the bowline is very easy to tie. You want to start off with the tag end in your left hand, giving yourself a little room to work. You want to start off by making a loop that making sure that the left side crosses over the right side. Sometimes that can be difficult depending on what type of rope you're working with. So an easy trick is to, with your left hand, twist away from you and with your right one, twist towards you and push together. That way, it'll always create the loop correctly. If you do it the other way and it comes out backwards, then the knot will just fall apart. So, while holding the loop right there, pinched together works quite easily. Come over and start to form your loop. This is where you could adjust it if need be. We're gonna come out of the hole. Back under the standing end. And then back down through the hole. You want to try and make sure to give yourself plenty of room on the tag end on the inside of the loop. And we'll discuss why in a moment. But you tighten that down quite nicely. Always making sure to hand tighten things first, especially with the bowline. If you pull tight, it ends up snagging on itself and coming undone. Now, like I mentioned the bowline has a few drawbacks, and I've only seen it a handful of times. But when you're towing a boat through the water, sometimes when if it's wavy out and whatnot, and the knot gets wet or shrinks or just pulls inconsistently, this can actually work itself free. And one solution people have is to tape this down. I've seen sometimes people just put a hitch over it. Unfortunately, this knot has a problem not with holding strength, because it's incredible for that, but it has a problem sometimes when there is no load applied. For instance, if you had this tied to a tarp that was in the wind and it kept flapping around, there you go. Now, granted, I didn't have that tied very tight, but the bowline only tightens down so tight. You know, once it's locked into place, it's locked into place around the cordage. But again, unfortunately, in some cases, see if I can get it to do it again. Now, again, I'm holding it just right to kind of make it do it, but, you know, that's, that's what happens, you know. Who knows what direction it's pulling from or what the, you know, the scenario is, but point is, it can happen. Now, I also mentioned that if you pull it too tight, too quickly, without hand tightening at first, it snags onto itself improperly. So that's something, or another reason why you need to hand tighten it first. Now, another one of the slight disadvantages to the bowline is that sometimes, in some cordage, paracord sometimes, and I think this stuff, the center loop right here, when there's lateral pull applied, will actually bend back over itself. Now, granted, that knot is still very stable and probably will not break or damage your cord, probably, who knows. You could have old, weak cord, could be something you found, you know, that's been sitting outside for a year, who knows what the reasons. But now it's pulling on the knot improperly, it throws itself off kilter, and now when there's actual vertical load pull on it, it actually does pull it back in place but I don't know if you noticed, it actually pulled the tag end back through a little bit. So if this was somehow subjected to multiple lateral and vertical pulling over and over and over again, this can actually work loose. I mean, it's, it's very slow, but I mean, it's, it's doing it. And this is only with hand pressure. So, again, there comes a point where it does kind of lock itself into place extremely ridiculously hard. And at that point, that's probably putting some damage on the outside of the of the cord and again it just depends how new and how well you take care of your cordage. Bowling even after all that should be fairly easy to undo 
with this back loop, just kind of flick it forward. Again, this one's fairly tight, but you can usually just kind of work it free. And pull them apart. Let's take a look at that in paracord real quick. Again, there's the finish knot. But this is by far probably one of my favorite knots. It's just because it's so easy to tie, it's quick, it's convenient, it definitely holds strong. But just like, you know, everything, there's the right knot for the right job, the right tool for the right job. So you got to keep that in mind, depending on what you're going to be using it for in your actual applications. So again, if you're standing in on the left, form a loop, being sure that the left side is on top of the right side. I like to just pinch it right there, it makes it easy to hold. I'm going to come up through the loop, around the standing end, and back down through the loop. Again, making sure, if you just kind of hold the tag end and the loop side while you pull, making sure to tighten that one also, that forms up real nice. Again, it takes a little, bit of, a little bit of hand tightening before this one actually is formed correctly. But again, even with paracord, let's see, I'll show this. Real easy to undo. Boom. And that would cause it to come undone. So, for instance, if you had something important and you were dragging it, I don't know, firewood, a person, whatever, and it's got pulled in the wrong direction and snagged on a stick, a branch, or whatever, just by doing that, you know, and it getting snagged up and then not having or having too much force on it can just cause it to come undone. You know, a lot of times uh, paracord after it's gotten wet or is maybe, you know, a year or two old maybe used, it gets a little stiffer and actually will allow it to push, and you know, push through the knot more. So that's just something to keep in mind. And there are actually other several variations of the bowling which we'll be going through that address all these problems. So again, that, uh, that's the standard bowling. Great loop knot to learn, very easy to use. As with many knot series, the Bolin, in fact, has multiple versions and variations of itself. This one is called the Double Bolin, and this one addresses some of the previous things that I mentioned, like lateral pull and or coming undone when there is or isn't slack on it. It's very simple to tie. Start off with our left hand again, twisting the loop towards us, except this time we're going to make two loops, one under the other same motion. I'm going to hold those together. Come up through the loop. Back under the standing end. And back down through the loop. Now what this one does is create an extra hitching point on top of everything. If I can grab hold of it. So you can see this one now hitches on top like it would. And this extra loop now crosses back under itself and then through the loop, giving it extra stability. And this one holds quite well. Now this one I find you definitely have to hand tighten a lot more, especially with larger cordage. And it's just a little more fiddly and it takes a little more tightening down by itself because if not, the knot will just deform and pull on itself wrong. Again, when a knot is formed properly, they usually work flawless 90% of the time. It's when they're tied slightly incorrectly, when there's a kink in the jacket, or some other variation like that that causes extra stress. And that's when choosing the right knot for the right job can count. So let's take a look at that again real quick. And again, it comes apart super easy. So that's one loop, two loop, under themselves. And again, I find it easier just to pinch in the middle Come up through the loop, around the standing end, and back down the loop. I'm trying to tie this a little exaggerated so you can see how it works. Let's take a look at that with some larger cordage. Again, start off forming our two loops one under the other. I'm going to come up through it, 
back under the standing end. Can't hold that still for you. And then back down through the loop. Now again, you can see if I pull too tight, that just makes a big old nasty mess. So it's very important to hand tighten things correctly. See, in fact, that made such a mess, it crossed over itself incorrectly. But when tied correctly, it's a very good, very useful, very sturdy knot. The water bowline is extremely useful and is even more sturdy than the previous two versions mentioned. And of course, it's great for when you're towing boats through water or whatever the case may be. So let's take a look at that. It's a little bit different. I'm going to start off again with a tag end on our left hand. Make one loop. Now this time, I'm going to take the second loop and put it next to itself. That you have a little pair of goggles, it looks like. A little pair of eyeglasses. What I like to do is just kind of hold this whole thing, both of them in my hand. Trying to keep those steady. And we're going to do basically the same motion of the regular bowline, but we're going to do it twice. So we're going to come up through the first loop. And this time we're going to come down and out of the second loop. So it comes out of the first loop and then up out of the second loop again. Now you go around your standing end, back down through the hole, which would be just like finishing a standard bowling, back down through the hole, and then back down to the second hole. So you're pretty much coming out and then back down the, of the holes twice. Now this one actually creates a little bit different structure than the double bowling, which has the two loops under each other. But again, just like with the previous one, you have to make sure to tighten it down by hand first, because if I just do it just like this, it's just going to form what would be a regular bowling and totally disregard this end, so that's no good. So you got to make sure to tighten it all down by hand. And this knot is definitely very secure. You could even go back further and tape that together. Let's look at that one more time. And again, all of these variations, everything you know, aside from the standard first version bowling, are much more difficult to untie. And but again, you know, to trade off. So again, we do one loop, and a second one next to it. Just kind of hold it all together in your hand. I'm going to come up out of the first loop and then down so it comes over, but then back up through the second loop. Undo the standing end. Back down the hole. And you want to make sure to come up and over came up and I'm going to go back over this line. So that's down through what would be the first hole. Again, making sure to hand tighten everything appropriately. All right, that's the water bowling. Very good, useful knot. Depending on the situation, sometimes you need to form a loop or a knot on a bite, that is, not being able to access either of the ends. Fortunately, the bowline is capable of that. It's pretty simple, you start out the same way. We've got our loop end over here. I'm going to take it and twist towards us so that the loop stays on the left side. We're going to come up out of the loop like we did before. Now this time it's a little bit different. Rather than going around, sorry about that guys, Rather than going around our tag end, we're actually going to take the rest of this loop and go around the whole thing. We come from behind. What that does is create the loop of a standard bowling at the bottom, but gives you two loops. Now, I don't know if you can see this on camera, 
But again, if I were to tighten down right now, it would probably cross these lines incorrectly. So again, that's something you just got to keep in mind. Some knots will avoid that, some don't. Just kind of depends. It's important to do that, especially on this knot, so that when your two loops are formed, they're actually two independent loops and not intertwined with each other. Yeah, see this one came out correctly. I have two independent loops. If I did it wrong, they would be one inside of each other and, and be all goofy. You want to always make sure that you have two separate loops. This is a great knot for all sorts of things, hanging gear, improvised slings, and I say improvised with extreme caution because unless you're a climber or have climbing rope, you shouldn't attempt anything like that. But, you know, it's been done and, well, let's face it, it can be done in an emergency. But you would want to use more than just this knot. I'm actually not going to be covering that type of material, though. But anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that again real quick. So I'm just going to use some paracord this time. I've got a bite in my line. I'm going to take to the same motion and go twist towards myself with the right and away with the left to form my two loops. I'm trying to make sure that these don't get crossed. It's kind of difficult, but if you don't, things can end up bad in the end. You end up getting crossed lines, and that's just not good. So it's already doing that. So again, come on top of itself, back up through the hole, and this time we want to take what is the rest of the loop and actually come around everything. And trying to get that kink out also, because you want to avoid that. This is where you'll be able to adjust any loops that are incorrect. But this is a very good, useful knot. Holds lateral pull really well, nice and tight. Very good, useful knot for independent loops for whatever your case may be.